Now, we begin in London, where the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says the electoral body has concluded a policy on diaspora voting. Professor Yakubu stated during a presentation at Chatham House in London on the topic Nigeria's 2023 elections, preparations and priorities for electoral integrity and inclusion. He expressed hope that the legal obstacles preventing foreign-based Nigerians from voting will be cleared eventually. He noted that the federal government had in 2017 put the number of Nigerians in the diaspora at 17 million, but more citizens have since left. The INEC chairman spoke on the commission's progress as they prepare for next month's general election. With every election for the last three electoral cycles, we also make provision for the possibility of a presidential runoff in case it happens. If it happens, then we'll have no issues. And this year is no exception. Fortunately, the time frame has also been extended. Uh, the fourth alteration to the Constitution has extended it uh, by two more weeks. So it's now three weeks instead of the one week we had before. We um, decided in one of the elections to change the configuration of the polling units by bringing the ballot papers closer to the ballot boxes, no, sorry, the voting cubicles, the ballot box closed to the voting cubicles, in order to curtail the distance that they travel between the time they make their choice in the cubicles to the point they drop the ballot papers in the ballot boxes. We thought we were making some progress. But another election followed a few months later that year, off-season governorship elections. Then we learned that they were using their smartphones. So instead of um, exposing the ballot paper, all you need to do is to go in with a smartphone, uh, snap the marked ballot paper, and then go and do whatever you wish to do later. We then banned the use of not only mobile phones, but even photographic devices in the voting cubicles. And the APC has taken its presidential campaign rally to Kwara State, where party supporters gathered to show solidarity for the presidential candidate of the party. Ashwaju Bolatinubu assured the crowd of his desire to make Nigeria great again if elected. Olawa Akon has details. The presidential candidate of the APC arrives at the Ilori International Airport in Kwara State. The campaign began right from the airport as Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, his running mate, Senator Kashim Shetima, national chairman of the party, and other APC chieftains climbed the campaign truck. The crowd of supporters lined the streets to welcome the APC team. Ashiwaju Tinubu makes his way in a grand style into the stadium full of party supporters. It is a carnival-like campaign rally. <laughs> The governor of Kwara State and others appealed to the crowd to vote for Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu for him to be able to consolidate on the progress of the All Progressives Congress in the country. I want you to continue to support us. Support the party of Ashiwaju Tinubu. giving us the confidence we need to move forward. We pray, we hope that this will be translated to real vote. The presidential flag bearer of the ruling party commended the crowd for coming out in large numbers to show support for the party. He urged them to translate their huge presence to vote at the polls. Today we are doing this year. Today we are just celebrating freedom. We are, we are assessing and we are starting the teaming supporters cheered Ashiwaju Tinubu up as he made his way out of the stadium to the palace of the Emir of Ilori. The monarch and other traditional rulers received the APC presidential candidate who holds a traditional title of the Miyaki of Ilori. Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu thanked them for their support. He assured the traditional rulers of a better Nigeria under his administration if elected. Yeah, it's not where I come from, except your blessing and your prayer. 
He had a lucky, very lucky man. May Allah grant you long life. Amen. And keep me good. Inshallah, we normally we celebrate with you on your victory in the election coming. This is considered as another satisfactory campaign rally and the massive crowd has shown again that the presidential candidate of the APC is loved by the people of the state and the party expects that the numbers will reflect on the ballot for the ruling party next month. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Ilori. Now, the People's Democratic Party in Ikita State says uh, they, are not, they are not bothered by the antics of former Governor Ayodele Fayoshi in frustrating the party ahead of the rally scheduled in Adwekiti. Some leaders of the party stated this at the presidential campaign led by its candidate, Atiko Obubakar, and other members in the PDP. Ayomide Ajegbe has details. Earlier in the day, some widows gathered in solidarity with the PDP presidential candidate. We are some leaders of the party charged the members to look beyond the current setbacks and use their PVC to make a statement. The party leadership is, we, is also doing everything possible to make sure that we bring everybody together because it is understood that nobody, no section can do it all alone. You know as well, Nigerians, we like to lead rushing hours for due to the complications of everything we do in the PDP to make sure people get their the mega rally of the party started off on an uncertain note with a handful of party supporters at the Akitek Parapo Pavilion, which was attributed to a strange scarcity of transport workers, which some says is another trick of the sleeve of the former governor of the state, Ayodele Fawashi, a situation some leaders of the party says does not bother them. Governor Fawashi is... He's, um, he's living his own life and he's following his own understanding of how things should be done. If you have people who think things should be done differently, then do it differently and let the world see. It's their business because you carry the business part of the party. Your picture or your name will not be on the ballot. If the ballot is for the party, and if you are not supporting the party, it's up to you. Gradually, the crowd started trooping and then the arrival of the PDP presidential candidate, who also started his speech from the initial setback while appreciating the people, also promised a better life for them if voted in. They caused an artificial scarcity of petroleum products so that even if you have your motorcycle, you have your own car, you cannot move simply so that they don't allow you to come here. But we brave all their challenges. I can assure you that a PDP federal government will make use of the human capital that God has endowed you in equity. Several dignitaries within and outside the state attended the rally, which includes former and present governors and lawmakers. Notable, however, is that only two of the PDP legislative candidates was present at the rally. Ayomide Ajay, the TVC News, Adwekiti. The remains of Omobolanli Rahim have been laid to rest three weeks after she was allegedly killed by a police officer in Lagos on Christmas Day last year. Amidst the national outrage, her death serves as a reminder on the need to urgently end the spate of extrajudicial killings of citizens. We have details in this report. The vaults and gardens in Awuyaya, Leki Ikpe Expressway, is Bolanli Rahim's final resting place. The brief, solemn and moving ceremony was done under strict instructions from the family that no one should take shots with their phone or camera. Though it was supposed to be a strictly private affair, a small crowd of sympathizers joined the family to bid the 41-year-old lawyer and award-winning property developer farewell. She was shot dead by a police officer identified as ASP Drambi Vandi on December the 25th, 2022 at Ajar Underbridge while he was on stop and search operations. The pregnant victim, her husband and seven-year-old daughter were in the vehicle along with the relative at the time of the incident. They were all returning from church after a Christmas service.
The police officer is now being prosecuted by the Lagos State Government for the murder. Trial continues on January the 25th and the 26th after he pleaded not guilty to the offense on Monday. Before her internment on Tuesday, a well-attended funeral service was held at the Olive Tree Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God on Banana Island Road in Ikui. The preacher, Uke Enelema, described the deceased as selfless, who lived a short but impactful life. He urged the family to take solace in God at this trying period. Surely we will know that our comes in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak your comfort. We speak your comfort. That we will return to say thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Mrs. Rahim, who is the first child of her parents, lives behind several loved ones, including her mother. As they grieve, the summons strength to believe that her shocking death will not be in vain. Kemi Foladeyemo, TVC News, Lagos.